Recently a subscriber sent me a link to a YouTube video compilation of snakes supposedly attacking people. And they pointed out to me that one of the top comments was basically, see, the experts are wrong when they say that snakes don't attack people. And I look at this comment and I see the other comments around it are all basically snake haters congregated in one place saying that the experts are effectively wrong and you should just dispatch snakes whenever you see them. And I thought, you know what, challenge accepted. So what we're gonna do today is I've gathered lots of the same clips as were in that video. We're gonna go through them and I'm gonna debunk them. If I can't debunk them, I'll look stupid. But I'm gonna tell you now, I feel pretty confident. Let's dive in. That's already a pretty simple one. There's no biting, there's no attacking. What you see is a snake, which is flustered for some reason, who knows why, going from one area to another area. And when you stop and you look at a still from the video, you actually see it parts ways with the humans. Instead of chasing after the human, it goes under the picnic table area. So it's not chasing this person. It's getting to cover. It's going to somewhere dark. And that's something we're gonna see repeatedly in this video. That one, to the untrained eye, I'd absolutely agree that could look like a snake attack. Until you take a closer look at what's going on. You see the snake going across this patio here. It's already past the point where the human enters. It's going past and the hu human comes in from the side towards the midline of the snake's body. And that to the snake feels like a predator coming in from the side to attack. So what does the snake do? It lunges at the person, trying to give it space, basically saying back off, and then carries on on its way. This isn't a snake attacking again, this is a snake defending. We've got to get to a point where we understand the difference between aggression and defensiveness, because for a wild prey animal like a snake, defensiveness is normal. Okay, this is the most lame snake attack in brackets of all of them. I mean, it's like, it's this terrified snake wiggling on the floor like a worm in a shop, desperately trying to get away from the people and try and get to cover. That's, you know, that doesn't even take an expert, so-called expert like me to debunk. Well, first of all, hats off to the mum for having those good reflexes and, and keeping her child safe. That's a really unfortunate incident to happen. I presume this is possibly in India. The child steps down towards the top of the snake. Again, it's a prey species. It feels like something coming from above is an attack and the child hasn't noticed a snake. So the snake's already logging one human attack there. And then as the child turns around and goes back towards the snake, the snake thinks, hey, he's coming back for more. He hasn't finished me off, so now he's gonna get me and then the snake rears up and becomes defensive. I'm here telling you we misconstrue snake behavior as aggression and attacks. And what's also happening right now is snakes misconstruing human behavior as attacks. So this is really interesting to see and just thank God the child wasn't bitten. Again, to the untrained eye, I could completely understand why someone could think that's a snake attack going on. Uh, I completely understand why that guy might have been scared or feel, you know, under attack if he's frightened of snakes. I had to stop the clip there because he stamps on it repeatedly. But again, you've got a snake who's broken cover. God knows what scared it out of cover in the first place. It's in an urban area. It's desperately trying to get through his legs, behind the chairs and to the darkest area it can see. Because in the wild, a dark area means shadow, that means shade, that means cover. That could be a dense spot of undergrowth or it could be a cave or something like that. And the snake is surprised by his leg moving up because quite frankly, snakes aren't, a lot of them aren't all that smart. When it sees something stationary move suddenly, again, its first thought is predator. So again, you've got a snake trying to get to cover, it's already freaked out and it gets defensive. We've got snakes getting freaked out and humans getting freaked out at the same time. Mm -hmm. 
again, this is a similar kind of scenario. We've got to look at the coincidences here. If you're outside and you're not a reptile person like me, you're just a normal person or someone who's afraid of snakes or you live somewhere where there's a lot of venomous snakes and your child sat on the floor and you're outside, you're going to feel like a snake going at you as fast as it can is a threat. And you could feel like that is an attack, but this wasn't an attack again. This is a snake that's broken cover for whatever reason and is trying to get to cover. It's trying to get somewhere it can hide or it can be away from humans. And instinctively, it believes that the dark area, the area behind the doors, is gonna be the safest spot. Unfortunately, if you're the human inside, then you're gonna be inside thinking, hey, the snake's now trying to chase me inside the house. And that's how these stories spread. That's how the snake chasing people spreads, you know? It's just, it's not true. Again, really simple. The snake's trying to get to cover, same thing, same scenario. It might have been investigating the house initially because it wanted to get somewhere cooler. That's something that happens, particularly in places like South Africa, Australia, parts of Asia, where it gets very, very hot outside. Snakes are abundant and they want to get somewhere cool. They think a house could be a nice, cool cave. If the snake had wanted to attack this woman, then it wouldn't have gone inside the house. It wouldn't have carried on. It would have gone back out to chase her. All right, come on, we know that's a setup video. First of all, why would a snake just fall out of a tree on you? That's like a one in a million event. That's that's really not common. Totally possible, but very, very uncommon. And there's this guy who just happens to be squatting in front of a camera in the forest for no apparent reason. He's just, you know, squatting, looking at the camera, doing nothing. And that's odd behavior in itself. And a snake just happens to fall on him, you know. I can tell it's set up, and if you're adults or you've got good critical thinking, you should also be able to tell that's set up. Again, that one, if that is a banded crate, which I think it might be, I, I really can't tell because, you know, it's potato cam quality, but if that is a banded crate, they've got every right to be freaked out and frightened because that is a serious bite. If you can't get to, you know, medical care quickly, you could have some serious problems unless you've got a pressure bandage. But Again, what does a banded crate do? It comes out at night and it forages an area where it thinks it might find food. It's a nocturnal hunter, it likes skinks and other snakes and stuff like that. And so it was probably foraging. It was probably simply looking for food, it's investigating an area. Again, snakes aren't the brightest. They don't think, could this object I see in the distance perhaps be a stationary human? They don't think like that. They think I need some food, I better look around and get some. So again, you know, they're right to be frightened, but it still doesn't make it a snake attacking people. <laughs> that one is not even, there's not even any attacking motion. That's a snake coming out from under a car. Again, that's a snake. What we're seeing a lot of in this video is this intersection of snakes entering human areas and then conflict possibly happening and humans feeling under threat from snakes that also feel under threat and don't really know what the heck they're doing in a garage, really. That was quite an interesting one, because again, that looks really convincing. If you were a snake hater, you'd have a strong case trying to say that was an attack. But when you look closer and you think about snake behavior, and like I say, they are a prey animal. They're not just a predator, they're a prey animal. You see that the snake is next to a fence, so it's got one exit completely blocked off and it's a, it's a long blockage, you know, there's no way it can get over or through that fence really. So it's got one avenue of escape blocked. And this guy is thinking about whatever, I don't know, how much his swimming pool cost. And he's walking towards the snake and the snake thinks, here's some big animal coming to threaten me, maybe it wants to eat me. And then when he gets close enough, it lunges at him to say, you know, get back. But again, he goes one way and the snake carries on another. It doesn't chase after him. It's not an attack. It doesn't want to kill him. It doesn't want to eat him. It's simply saying, get back, give me distance, which he did in fairness. Yeah, again, this is a snake. It's obviously trying to get to an area of cover. When it sees something start moving, it rears up and it gets defensive. This is a snake, we don't know where it's just come from. It might have been flushed out of some other cover. It's not necessarily trying to go and attack this lady. And if it really wanted to attack her, if these animals were, you know, these demons that they're made out to be, throwing some bread or something at it wouldn't stop it, would it now? It would keep going.
that definitely looked like a reticulated python. And to my eyes that one seemed a lot smarter than all the other snakes in this video because it goes in and actually, like I said before, talking about dark and light areas, it's obviously on the prowl hunting somewhere. Dark outside and light inside. After two seconds in the house it thinks, oh crap, I'm in a human dwelling or this bright weird area, I don't know what this is, I'm going back outside and it leaves again. You know, again, no snake attack detected here. Ah, here we go. Really convincing snake attack there. At least so it seems at first. You see a kid swinging on a hammock and the snake strikes at their feet, basically, and, and, and eventually gets a toe, it looks like. But then you go back again to the start and you look for context, what's actually happening. This isn't a very big snake. We don't know if it's venomous or not. We don't know what species it is because my eyes aren't good enough really on that kind of quality. But you notice there's a cockerel behind it. Cockerels love to eat snakes, they love to eat mice, they love to eat lizards, they peck, kill and eat anything they can swallow basically. You'd be surprised at just how voracious a chicken is. I mean really they are they are little dinosaurs, as much as I love them. And they, they will definitely hassle and peck at and try and kill a snake that size. Some cockerels have even been spotted kicking snakes to death. So you've got a snake that has some kind of creature, some human that it might or might not recognize as a human swinging back and forth and swinging its limbs at its face and then behind it, its, its exit is blocked off by a predator, a chicken. So this is not a snake that is randomly going to attack someone. This is a snake that feels cornered and thinks it's gonna be eaten. Again, that's got to be a reticulated python, I'm sure. That looks like it might be somewhere like Malaysia, possibly, where they do enter buildings. And unfortunately, this one has fallen through the roof. And this is, you know, it's quite exciting to see. Um, <laughs> I've no doubt it gave them a surprise. But again, it wasn't a snake attack. It was an accident. The snake might have hurt itself. Who knows? One of the humans might have hurt themselves. These are unfortunate situations. They're misunderstandings, but they're not attacks. That was a really weird one. This was the one, the one video I think that we've got to so far that I'm, I'm looking at and thinking this was very, very strange. Because the snake kind of slips out from the bush and you'd, if you weren't really into snakes, you'd probably think it was striking. To my eyes though, it wasn't striking. You never see what is probably a rat snake, to be honest, just slip out like that after striking. When a snake strikes, it usually maintains its posterior quarter at least off the ground and, and lunges and lunges back so that wasn't a strike even though to the untrained eye that could definitely look like a strike therefore it wasn't an attack that was a good one that was kind of cool again no attack detected but it's cool because you see the snake doing kind of natural behaviors obviously it's somewhere it's not meant to be it doesn't want to be and it's trying to, to move between areas of cover and it obviously thought this person was a convenient boulder or something, you know? That one was a, a quick one there. <laughs> I gotta say, I didn't see any snake attack. I saw again a snake trying to escape. There's like a bedding area there. But what really confuses me with that one is why the person had a blanket over their head at the start. I thought that was really interesting. <laughs> what have we just seen? We've seen all these supposed snake attacks where snakes are coming into contact with humans, sometimes conflict, and there's a mutual misunderstanding. I didn't see one unprovoked snake attack. I didn't see snakes chasing people or trying to kill people or trying to bite people. Saying that they attack people and saying you should kill snakes just because you're afraid of them is wrong. And we all know it's wrong deep down. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's a bit different from what I usually do, but I think sometimes it's good for me to be challenged. So hopefully you'll come back next week and I'll have something else for you. Thank you very much.